Good day, students. So welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 11 to 15 of the integrated algebra regions for June 2014. All right, uh, so don't forget to visit math.serve.com for a collection of wide math tutorials ranging from algebra to calculus. All right, let's take a look at uh, problem number 11. It says, which notation is equivalent to the inequality negative three less than x and x less than or equal to seven. All right, so let's go ahead and go over these notations real quick. We know that this is less than and um, this is greater than. These two do not ex include the endpoint that we are pointing to, all right? So for less than, we're uh, talking about um, a left endpoint, and then for greater than, you're talking about the right endpoint. So in this case, since um, they do not include the endpoint, you're going to use a parenthesis. So for less than, you have parentheses like this, and then for greater than, you have a parenthesis like that. Now, if you have less than or equal to, this basically means that that endpoint, the left endpoint, is included. So how do you express that using um, uh, set notation? You basically use um, the edgy bracket like this, okay? So that's how you represent it. <clears throat> and um, for, this is less than or equal to, and then for greater than or equal to, you have a bracket like this, okay? So if you apply this um, uh, designs to this inequality we have here, this less than tells you that this uh, lower endpoint is included, so that is not included, sorry, so that's going to be a parenthesis, and it is greater than or equal to, is concerning this positive 7. This line means inclusion, so we're going to have a bracket like that. So this is going to be equivalent to negative 3 all the way to um, 7, with 7 included. So there goes the interval notation of this inequality right here. So let's see. Our answer is going to be option number two. All right. All right, let's move on to number 12. So for number 12, we have an algebraic expression, 3a squared minus 4 times the absolute value of a plus 6. And you have to evaluate this when a is equal to negative 3. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and, and um, do this problem. Now, what we have here, we're going to substitute negative 3 into a, this a and this a. So we're going to have 3 times, let's put in the negative 3 there, negative 3 raised to the second power minus 4 times the absolute value of negative 3. All right, and then you add six to the result. Now let's go ahead and simplify this expression. This basically assesses our ability to accurately use the order of operations to simplify um, um, arithmetic expressions. So we have to deal with the parentheses first. So this square has to be resolved. Likewise, this absolute value situation here. So negative three square Negative times negative is positive. 3 times 3 is 9. So negative 3 squared is 9. Okay? Minus 4 times was the absolute value of negative 3, positive 3. All right, absolute value just represents the distance of a number from the num from 0 on a number line. Okay, in this case, it's 3 plus 6. Now, using our order of operations, what do we do? Add, subtract, and multiply. Well, in the order of operations, let's go ahead and write that, that down again. Please excuse my Dan Sally. We, we group multiplication and division. They're in the same um, group, and then addition and subtraction are in the same group, okay? So these ones you do from left to right, and then this one from left to right. Whichever one comes first, multiply and divide first from left to right, and then after dealing with multiplication and division, and then you take care of addition and subtraction in the order from left to right, whichever one comes first. So we have multiplication, subtraction, and addition here. So we have to do uh, multiplication. It ranks higher in a hierarchy of the order of operations. All right, so 3 times 9 is 27. 
negative 4 times positive 3 is negative 12 plus 6. Okay? So now uh, we just we can subtract this to 27 uh, minus 12 is 15. 15 plus 6 is 21. All right, so our final answer is option number three. Okay, let's take a look at number 13. It says, which relation is a function? So the definition of function is a relation that assigns every output exactly one input. If you have an input being assigned to two outputs, that relation is not a function, okay? So here we have a set representation um, of relations and we ask which one is a function. The easiest way to identify which set is um, a representation of a function uh, which relation is a representation of a function is the one with no repetitions on the axis, no repetitions uh, on the x coordinate. Why is that the case? Well, if you have repetitions in your x coordinate and you have distinct y values, what's happening is you're assigning one input to two distinct outputs, and that violates the definition of uh, a function okay so a function two out one output can have two inputs that's fine but um one input must go to exactly um one output you can have one input going to two different outputs so all we're going to focus our attention in on is the x coordinates okay we'll look for repetitions let's start with option number one you have a two three four five are there any repetitions there? The answer is no. So guess what? The answer is option number one. Okay. Now let's just go over two, three, four just to highlight the point. Number two, we have one, 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 one. Repetitions? Yes, four times. That's just terrible. Um, so this is absolutely not a function. Number three, we have two, three, four, two. Any repetitions? Yes, we have twos repeated, not a function. And then option four, we have one, two, three, three. What do you notice? The x's were repeated, right? So that's not a function also. So if you're dealing with functions, uh, if you're dealing with uh, identification of functions when you're given relation in a set notation, just focus on the x coordinates. And the one that does not have any repetition is a function. And the ones with repetitions are not functions. So keep that in mind. All right, let's move on to question number 14. Question 14 says 6x squared minus 4x plus 3 is subtracted from 3x squared minus 2x plus 3. The result is. So you want to pay real close attention to the order here. The way that is written is not the way that you carry out the subtraction. Notice this is being taken out of that. All right, so let's say you, have, you take $5 from your account, all right? Let's say your account has $10 million in there, all right? So you have um, $10 million in your bank account. You take $5 from it. What's your balance going to be? It's going to be your $10 million minus the $5, right? So it's although you say $5 from $10 million, when you're carrying out the calculation, you switch the order, all right? So how do we write this um, in mathematical form? It's going to be 3x squared minus 2x plus 3. From this, we'll subtract 6x squared minus 4x plus 3, okay? So you don't set it up with the order as written. You have to reverse the order, okay? So we have a minus here. We have to distribute this minus to everything here. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to yield um, 3x squared minus 2x plus 3. And then when you distribute the negative, you have negative 6x squared plus 4x minus 3. And then let's go ahead and add it downwards. If we do that, we're going to have negative 3x squared 
um, plus 2x, and then these add up to 0. All right? So we can clearly see that our answer is option number 2. Okay, let's take a look at number 15. It says the length of the sides of a right triangle can be. So the, the size of the um, the size of the the length of the size of a right triangle must satisfy a special equation. Okay, there's a theorem for uh, the relationship between the size of a right triangle. Let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and write down what that theorem is. If I can draw my triangle. So let's say we have a right triangle like this. What is the relationship between the three sides? Well, the Pythagorean theorem is a theorem that relates the three sides. Okay, it basically says the sum of the square of the legs, a squared plus b squared, is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Okay, so any of these three side lengths that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem represents the lengths of the sides of a right triangle. Okay, right triangle, 90 degree angle included. So let's start with option number one. We have 9, 12, 15. What on earth does this mean? It means this, the length of the legs are 9, 12, and 15. The longest side, side length is the hypotenuse. That's why I call it C. The other two shorter legs are are the legs, okay, A and B. So the question is, does this triple satisfy the Pythagorean theorem? So let's go ahead and test it out. We have um, A square plus B square equals C square. So we're going to have 9 square plus 12 square. The question is, is it equal to 15 square? Is it? 9 square is 81 plus for, uh, 12 square is 144 and then 15 square is 225 81 plus 144 if you do the calculations you get 225 is 225 equal to 225 absolutely so this triple satisfies the Pythagorean theorem so what does that mean this side lengths represent the size of a right triangle all right, so our answer is option number one. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Now feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. And do post a comment to let us know what you think about this presentation. More clips can be found on markgoodserve.com slash test prep. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.